Hi, NA Physics. It's Mr. Neff. Hey, I ran out of time in the last video, so I just wanted to wrap up here on sound intensity level in decibels. And I know I still have to tell you why should you never trust a train. So my question is, what happens when you double or you half the intensity? Say you had, uh, had one worker working with a cordless drill and it was making a certain amount of noise. And what if another drill was started to be used at the same time right beside? What would that do to the intensity level? Well, it's tempting at first to say, well, it would double the intensity level. But if you think about it, the cordless drill might be in the ballpark of, uh, of 70 or 80 decibels. So would that mean two of them would be in the ballpark of 140 to 160 decibels? No, it wouldn't be because that's the sound of a jet aircraft. That's the sound of something that is extremely, extremely loud and could really damage your hearing in no time at all. Are two drills operated side by side loud? Yes, but not like that. So let's just say that we wanted to figure out how much louder two would be than one. Now you might be thinking, well, you gotta tell me some more. You gotta tell me what is the intensity of one, but I actually don't have to tell you that. All you gotta know is that there are two. So let's say with just one of the drills, let's say the intensity is an I. And if we had both of the drills together, the intensity would be 2i. Now, I, I know the decibel level is not two times, but the intensity would be two times because they're doing twice as much work on the air, there's twice as much energy going out there, and so we have double the intensity. So what's that do to the intensity level? Well, if you think about it, I'll say that the change in sound level is 10, log base 10, of the louder sound, 2i over the softer sound, i. You see that the i's are going to cancel out, and it's just going to give you 10 log base 10 of 2. Notice something. This could be a really soft sound. This could be a really loud sound. Whatever it is, the intensity parts are going to cancel out. So if you have two of those loud sounds versus one of those loud sounds, or two soft sounds versus one soft sound, it's always going to give you the same calculation. Stop the video, run that through your machine real quick, and see how many decibels above the one sound is the two. If you just stopped that and you did that calculation, you'll see something that you really want to remember. Three decibels. You always see that every time you double the intensity, the decibel level goes up by three. Remember something, too. On the last video, the tail end of the last video, I asked, all right, well, look at this, at this person. She went to a place that was twice as far from the motor. Twice as far from the motor gave her one-fourth the intensity because of she was on a sphere that was four times as large in surface area. See something, though? She went, she went to a place somewhere in there. There it was half, there twi or half the intensity and then a place that was half the intensity again to get that that one-fourth the intensity. And so we started off by saying the farther spot was 89 decibels, and when we doubled and doubled again, look, we had 95 decibels. Notice that that's six decibels difference. Three for doubling and three for doubling again. If you half the intensity, the same thing happens. Say we had two people talking, trying to talk over each other, and then let's say one of the people stops talking. So say we had we had uh, two people talking, and then one person, they, they stop. Well, whenever you only have one person talking, it's going to be three decibels lower than whenever you had two people talking. Again, they might be shouting at each other. They might be whispering. I'm not sure. But whenever you have two people talking, you're going to have a decibel level of blah, blah, blah decibels. And when you only have one person talking, you're going to have that same blah, blah, blah minus three decibels. There you go. A good thing to remember comes up a lot. Two more quick examples on this video. And this time I have uh, two people. Now, the threshold of hearing is an average. There are people that whose hearing is damaged and they don't ha they can't hear the sound of the threshold of hearing. And then there are some people that are basically superheroes and they can hear things that are the threshold of hearing and they can even hear quieter sounds than that. So look at these two people. In this problem, we have, uh, we have person one and person two. And so it says that they're not average, that the person one 
has a threshold of hearing for them, a personal threshold of hearing of negative eight decibels versus a person two has a threshold of hearing of positive 12 decibels. Stop for a second, think about which person you'd rather be. Pause the video. Okay, so if it were me, I would rather be person one because person one can hear sounds that are even softer than the threshold of hearing. They don't need it to be as loud as zero. They can hear sounds that are at negative eight decibels. And if you're catching on to this logarithm idea, you can see that, well, that's actually pretty impressive. Negative eight see, it doesn't seem like much, but it's, it's pretty close to negative 10. And negative 10 would say they can hear something that's t only one tenth the intensity. Person B, I probably am person B because I do have a little bit of hearing loss. And person B, they can't hear something at zero decibels. They can't even hear something that's 10 times that intense. They need 12 decibels. And so they want to know, uh, in terms of a ratio, in terms of a factor, how much better is the hearing of person one than, it, than person two? Okay, so it, for the intensities, I can take the change in sound level, and I can make that 10 decibels log base 10 I over I naught. Now, what I want to do is I want to solve for that I. And now, some people are going to say, oh, I don't remember from math class how to do that. But it involves going from logarithmic notation, the way I have it written here, to exponential notation. And so uh, I'm going to try to solve this for I using exponential notation. First step is I'm going to take this change in sound level and I'm going to divide it by 10. I've divided off this 10 right here. And that's going to be log base 10 I over I naught. Here's the step that a lot of people forget. Now remember that logarithms are exponents. So this thing over here on the left is the exponent. And this is the base. And that's why I put that 10 down there all the time. Even though it's understood to be there, it reminds you when you have to do the step to make it base 10 to the exponent. That's a cumbersome exponent, I know, is equal to I over I naught. And so, boy, those two statements look very differently. They are the same thing. One's logarithmic notation, one's exponential notation. Now, well, I'm going to solve for I, and so I'm going to make it I naught times 10 to the power of the change in sound level divided by 10. Okay, now that seems like a mouthful. Let's do it for each person. So let's go person one, and the intensity for them that they can just barely hear is the intensity of the threshold of hearing. So that's 10 to the minus 12 watts per square meter times 10 to the change in sound level for them. That's a negative A over 10. So uh, you could just put this into your machine, but maybe you don't need to do that. Maybe you can say this is uh, 10 to the minus 12 and 10 to the negative 0.8. So this will be 10 to the negative 12.8. Person two is going to be similar to that. Their intensity is going to be 10 to the minus 12 times 10 to the 12 over 10. And again, maybe you can clean it up without the use of your machine. This is going to be a 10 to a 1.2. And so negative 12, positive 1.2 is going to be a 10 to the negative 10.8 power. And so if I were going to divide those the way it says, this intensity 1 by intensity 2, that's going to be a 10 to the negative 12.8 over a 10 to the negative 10.8, which will give me an intensity of 10 to the 2, 10 to the negative 2 times. It's not watts per square meter. And so all that is to say this, the, the person uh, with the better hearing can hear something that is a, a hundredth as intense as the person with the lesser hearing. This last problem is, is a really neat one, and it, it goes along with the, this exponential idea. 
And here it goes. It says, when one person shots at a football game, the sound intensity level at the center of the field is 60 decibels. I always think that's kind of funny. Maybe, uh, maybe just your mom is at your game and no, no other fans. And then it says, when all the people shot together, the intensity level increases to 109 decibels. Assuming each person generates the same sound intensity, how many people are at the game? Now, the person who doesn't understand this very well is going to think, well, there's two people at the game and the other person's not as loud as the first person. Man, nothing could be farther from the truth. Yeah, let's do this. Let's figure out what the intensity of, of the, uh, each person is. And so we're going to all say they all can generate this 60 decibels on their own. And they know that all the people don't contribute equally to the intensity level, but they all do contribute equally to the intensity. They all put the same amount of energy into the air. How much? Well, the, the change in sound, in sound level, 10, log base 10, I over I naught. Here are the same steps that I did a second ago, and I end up getting 10 to the change in sound level over 10 power times I naught is equal to the intensity of each person. So this time I can say that this is 10 to the 60 over 10 or 10 to the 6 times 10 to the minus 12 for the threshold of hearing is equal to the intensity. And so I'm going to get the intensity for one person is 10 to the minus 6 watts per square meter. Now every one of those people is contributing 10 to the minus 6 watts per square meter. Now what about all of those people? Well similar kind of thing now the intensity for all of the people maybe I'll call it intensity 2 versus intensity 1 is 10 to the 109 divided by 10 times 10 to the minus 12. Maybe you can do this uh, in your head. So this is 109 divided by 10 or 10.9 plus a negative 12, which is going to be a 10 to the negative 1.1 power uh, watts per square meter. So now that's a, that's a lot more, that second one. And how many times more is it? Well, as many times more it is, is how many people there are. And so if I take, take my 10 to the minus 1.1 divided by 10 to the minus 6, I admit, I can't do that one in my head. You end up getting a really surprising number, 79,400 fans. And so this is a major, major sporting event here. And every one of those fans is contributing to the, to the intensity equally, but they're obviously not contributing to the decibels equally. And just before we go, the joke, why can you never trust a train? Because they've got locomotives.